I'm going to go ahead and start the recording just so uh, the students that were unable to be here tonight can maybe uh, learn from the same session. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is start with a little bit of why should we pursue the MAC? Then a little bit about our requirements. So what, what classes do you need to take? What elect, how many electives do we have? We'll talk a little bit for the UNI students about the integrated approach. So you can actually start classes while you're finishing up. Then if you're interested, how do you apply? And what's the process about that? We'll look, we'll mention a little bit about the finances and some additional funding opportunities you have. We'll look at some example schedules and then what do you do next? So that's what we're going to start with. But before we begin, let's do a few introductions. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, which is a few of you on the list, uh, I am Amy Igo. I am the program coordinator of our Master of Accounting program. So that means I help all of our students make sure they meet all the requirements to graduate, uh, help them get their uh, transcripts in order and do the, go through the application process. So a bunch of other stuff with that, but those are the big things. Also with me is a fellow colleague in the department, uh, Dr. Gabe Dickey, who will give some of his perspectives and also our department chair, who I know most of you know as well, uh, Dr. Joe Ugrin. And last but not least, joining us also this evening is uh, Andy Strabi, and he's a current MAC student. So if you have questions that you'd like to ask from a MAC uh, student perspective, he's our guy this evening to help us out. So I'd first like to turn it over to Gabe. So why would you recommend a student doing a MAC, the MAC? Yeah, I, I really look at it as three primary reasons. I mean, I think the first one is uh, the obvious and that the, the success rate on the CPA exam for our students that take the MAC is very, very close to 100%. Um, that's because of the uh, additional work and knowledge that you get in the program. Um, the second reason, I think, is because you're doing, you're, you're expanding your accounting knowledge, um, how you use that extra 30 hours can go in different directions, but it, to me, it makes sense to use those 30 hours towards an advanced degree um, where you get to expand your accounting knowledge. I know in my course, we, we do a fair bit of real world uh, scenarios and real world research, so you're putting together research papers that a lot of students come back and tell me they don't start, you know, doing until maybe their third year in the profession, but you're getting that experience now. So it's got a real world experience to it. Um, you're also working with the codification and, and learning how to navigate that, how to look up accounting guidance. And that's very beneficial on the uh, CPA portion um, of the FAR exam as well. And then the last reason is, is maybe more of an intangible, um, but I'm a, this is just something I'm a big believer in because I've seen it throughout my career um, benefit me, but is giving yourself a chance at what I call optionality, more options. And having an advanced degree gives you more potential options going forward. I know a lot of PhD programs um, require an advanced degree, whether that's an MBA or a master's, um, you know, I got grandfathered in, but that's because there, there weren't the, the prevalence of these programs 25 years ago. But now a lot of them are, are requiring that you have um, some sort of advanced degree. So this just gives you more options. And when you combine those three things, um, the CPA exam success, the additional skills you're getting, along with greater optionality going forward, uh, those would be the big reasons why I would recommend a MAC. Thank you, Gabe. So Andy, from a student perspective, why would you recommend a fellow student to possibly consider the MAC as for their fifth year? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, great question. I think, you know, as you go into internships, um, as you kind of go further al along your, your undergrad at UNI, you're going to realize that a lot of the people you work with at those internships, both that are currently at the company that are interning with you, 
um, most of them are actually going to be going for a Mac too, right? So it's one of those things that like you almost kind of have to have it just to be in the picture, right? And so kind of what Gabe was saying too, you know, if you go to the pantry, you have peanut butter, you go to the fridge, you've got jelly, but you've got no bread it doesn't really make sense, right? You're not going to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. If you go to you and I, right, you're going for your CPA, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to just leave the Mac out of there. So um, it's one of those things, like as we're kind of progressing along society with this 150 hour rule, um, a lot of colleges have adapted the Mac, right? And so you're going to see most of the people in the profession are going to have that master's degree. Now, yes, you could go do a double major or triple major um, in a different in a different you know area of study, um, go that route. But at the same time with the Mac, not only are you taking more accounting classes to prep you for that CPA, right? I don't, I don't think that percentage lies. Um, but you've also got this scenario where you've got an advanced degree, right? And that's pretty cool. So when you're working with people in the accounting world, when you're working with people outside of the accounting world, um, that master's holds a lot of weight. And so for me, that was a big one. Um, to have a master's degree in five years, there's not a whole lot of um, other places you can do that, right? An MBA, you're not going to knock that out in a year. Obviously, when there's anything medical involved, there's multiple years there, counseling, two years at least. So we're kind of in a really cool position as an accountants, right? Where you can just one extra year of your time when you're younger is a master's degree for the rest of your life in the rest of your career. That's pretty hard to hard to beat. So I'm sure if you ask, you know, Professor Dickey right now, he's got two kids running around the house. Do you have time to go back for a master's degree now? I'd almost bet it's about 100% no way, dude, right? And so getting that knocked out as a student who doesn't have too many worries, right? I know it can be stressful sometimes. But realistically, when you look at the real world as a whole, this there's no better time than when you're fresh out of your undergrad to just get it knocked out and keep it going. I have one thing to add, and then I'll ask Joe for, uh, for some brief comments as well. Uh, honestly, I think the classes are more fun. I mean, uh, you are discussing real life situations. We're digging in my class. We're digging into data. Um, you know, it's not trying to remember the precise one word answer or do a calculation. It's, you, there's some black and white, you really have to think, and it brings everything together more than I think you do with just additional classes. Joe, what would you add to this? Well, I guess I, I would, um, I'm going to follow up on Andy and say, don't do what I did. Um, and that's a stretch out a graduate degree over, uh, you know, I guess it, in the end, it probably took me eight years to uh, finish a graduate degree um, between, you know, starting a class or two after graduation and then uh, um, finishing up CPA exam and then going back and trying to finishing up, finish up the graduate degree later. It would have been a heck of a lot easier to uh, merge all of those into one year. The, uh, um, you know, potential growth and employment that I might have, uh, you know, put off for years. Um, you know, was significant. So, so I think, uh, you know, follow up on that for sure. Um, and as Gabe said, there's very practical reasons, students that, that, you know, finish a graduate degree, um, go straight into CPA review, their pass rate on the, on the uh, exam is almost a hundred percent. So both of those things I didn't do. I didn't have a CPA review, like all of you guys have the option to, it, that took me time. Um, I did a graduate degree overtime, part-time in the evening once I got done with that CPA exam, and that took forever too. So um, it's a great opportunity. Um, you'll, you never know when a position might ask for a graduate degree. It, it'll, as Andy pointed out, at a lot of universities, almost all of the students are getting a graduate degree. Um, and so that you might be uh, set yourself behind a little bit compared to other people in the market. Now, the market's great right now. You're not having a hard time getting a job, but it, it won't always be like that. And uh, you want to set yourself up for success 10, 15, 20 years from now, too. And uh, when you can do it in just uh, such a short time frame and with it all integrated together, it, it's a great opportunity. Thank you, Joe. So those are some things to think about, but let's look a little more detail of what's required. First, a couple things that I, every once in a while I hear some rumors about the Mac that maybe we'll just try to dispel right now. First of all, it's impossible to get in the Mac. Well, obviously not. We have students in the Mac. Uh, all A and B students should definitely consider. Uh, you will be great candidates and we would love to have you. If you're a little bit borderline, come talk to me. We'll, we'll try to figure out a plan to get you there. 
Um, I've heard we can't do a double major. Yes, you can. I have students who've done double majors. Uh, the only thing is sometimes we just got to plan a little, uh, a little early. We may need to do some creative scheduling, but if you come talk to me, we'll see what we can do. If you ask me at the end of your fourth year and you have a double major, it's going to be a little trickier. So plan early, so have that conversation uh, with actually any of us, but I'm usually the one who right now puts together all of our schedules. Um, another common thing I hear now and then, I shouldn't do the Mac if I'm wanting to go into industry instead of public accounting, or if you're not taking the CPA. Well, of course, we are going to promote the CPA because we have a great program here. But if that's not your career path, um, look at helping, you know, it. any graduate degree is going to help you with future employment. I think we've said it here between Gabe and, and Joe. You don't know what the job requirements are going to be in 10 years. So a lot more and more advanced uh, upper level positions require a grad degree. So it's easier now. Trust me. I also waited uh, 10 years between each degree. So um, about. So that is a lot easier. Employers don't care if I have the Mac. Well, yes, there are some employers that are saying, no, you don't need that fifth year. Come work for us now. I believe that is very short-sighted. Um, if you don't plan on ever leaving that company, maybe that's the path to go. But honestly, that doesn't happen very much anymore. So, um, you know, not having it means it'd be harder to go back later should you need it or you don't get it and you limit your opportunities. So, you know, it's things to think about trying to open as many doors as possible now. Oops. So I actually will give you a few minutes to fill out a quick survey. Uh, this way I can capture who is here as well as kind of gauge your interests. And you can let me know if you want to follow up. Uh, you can actually do this and finish it any time during this presentation, but I'll let you go to the chat now or put, put this. Um, I will put this in the chat. Oops, I need to quick copy it quick. And I'll put this here just in case uh, QR code's not working. But if you would fill this out, just captures your name, where you at are at in your studies. And that way I can reach out according and we'll start setting up advising appointments. So let's give you two or three minutes to go ahead and do that. I think I need music. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> We'll give you just another one more minute to wrap this up. As I said, you can finish it throughout the presentation. I just want to make sure everybody captures the link.
All right, let's go ahead and move on while you are wrapping up the survey. Okay, so a little bit about the requirements. Uh, first of all, the MAC program is 30 credits. So think about it, uh, you need 150 for your CPA, your undergrads 120 plus 30, 150, magic. Uh, not a coincidence, by the way. Anyway, so there are four required classes that everybody takes. And we usually have everybody take these as a group, although we can have a few exceptions. So those classes are financial the accounting theory, applied research, which by the way, Professor Dickey uh, teaches part of, business analytics, and business law. So these are the classes where everybody really gets to know each other. There is a lot of group work uh, in these courses. And this is where you get ex to examine a lot of real world problems. The other 18 credits are electives, meaning we could try to adjust what you are taking and uh, to meet what your career goals are, to find some interest. Sometimes it even means getting a little bit out of accounting just to take some management classes or something else. The other thing that is required is an experiential learning requirement. So you have to have an internship or some work experience in accounting at some point. Uh, you don't have to necessarily take it for credit, but that is an option. If you don't have uh, a, any job experience in accounting, uh, you can take uh, VITA, or income tax preparation. So that is another way to get your experience. One of the things that we offer for six credits, so it would replace two of your courses, is a rent elective option. And I'll probably Andy was able to join that, so I'll probably give him just a second in a minute here to say a couple words about that. So you get an international experience, plus you get a certificate in artificial intelligence in business uh, within four weeks and six graduate credits. So it's four one-week classes. The topics vary a little bit uh, each year, but it's offered in Rennes, which is about two hours northwest from Paris. So you can take the train uh, a little bit on weekends or before or after, explore the country. Andy, you want to tell a couple, just a brief moment on your experience in this program? Yeah. So um, for those of you who are thinking about, you know, me on the fence of should I go to Ren, should I not? Um, I think if you're on the fence, that's kind of a no brainer to me that you should be going. Um, so, you know, it's it's one of those experiences that you know, you talk to alumni and they say one of their biggest regrets is not going out of the country, right? So when you are in college, um, the price that you pay to go on campus at these other places, such as Wren, um, is really pretty minimal in comparison to the difference that it would be above going to a class here in Cedar Falls. Um, but over the four weeks, we had four different classes. Um, one of my favorite parts of this uh, program is that you get four different teachers with it too. So our first teacher was from Greece originally. Um, our second teacher was from Italy, our third teacher uh, was from China, and our fourth teacher was from Turkey, which is pretty awesome. So you get kind of a whole sense of Europe um, for the people that are teaching you. Um, and then beyond the classes, right, really what's maybe the most important part of this is the world experience. So flying over there for the first time, taking a train, understanding how European travel works, getting to be immersed in a language that's not yours, getting to see beyond a culture that's not yours. Uh, I mean, these are all really, really soft skills that you just can't teach. And so um, over that time, you know, there were 16 UNI students that went this past year. Um, and, and we still, you know, we meet up for bonfires every month now that we've been back. And so you make these friends that, right, you maybe, you knew a little bit about, you know, a few of them, um, you come back though, really good friends. Um, it was just, it's an experience I can't say enough good things about. So if you're on the fence about that this upcoming summer, um, I think, you know, looking back at my my five years at UNI, I think that will probably be the most memorable thing I did and the thing I'm most glad that I, I took the chance and the leap on. So um, I, I can't encourage you enough to take these, these six MAT credits. And at the end of it too, right, you get six MAT credits, which is, that's pretty valuable, right? I mean, I, I can't tell you how hard these classes can be. Um, so to knock these out right away is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. and I'd add on top of that, I mean, when you talk about, again, or when I talk about giving yourselves options, 
you know, you, you think about yourself getting out with a four-year undergraduate degree, passing the CPA exam, getting a master's, and then, oh, by the way, on top of that, in a world that is constantly valuing um, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and all that, you get an AI and business certificate. I mean, you just think about in five years, everything you've accomplished, and you're really very well set mm -hmm. uh, to hit the market and for the next several years, the, the sky's kind of the limit with all of that, I would think. I mean, it's it's pretty staggering that you can accomplish that much in five years. And believe me, as somebody that's been on the end, the hiring end of the equation, employers notice that. So you're not just doing something for your first job, which, which almost all of you already have. You're doing something that's going to benefit you for your second and potentially third job after that, if, if you so choose to go that route. That, that's really cool. Plus, most of you have an internship, and on top of that, but the international experience, you just very well rounded uh, it through this program. Thank you. So, electives, just some if you're thinking about auditing or consulting, some of the electives that we would recommend. Of course, we will still work with you. Advanced accounting, uh, some call it intermediate three, uh, government nonprofit. Uh, you can do your internship for credit. We have an advanced audit class that is offered during the summer, as well as fraud analytics. Uh, of course, the REN program, AI and business. And even though you may not be going into tax, advanced tax is not a bad class to take because you know what? Even as an auditor, you're going to get into tax issues. If you're working in industry, even if you are not the tax expert, you sometimes need that person in the room that says, hey, I think we have a tax problem, and at least understands enough to have those conversations with the experts. If you're thinking of tax, of course, GMP is also great. You can do a tax internship. And sometimes those in um, tax area also want to understand investments and some of the financial planning aspects. So we can get you linked into the finance department for classes uh, to help with that area as well. Other electives that students have taken, uh, project management, business ethics, compensation, uh, marketing research, org behavior. Actually, uh, you can take any other business course that's 5,000 or above. Uh, with approval of the MAC director. So, um, and we usually try to base those based on interest. Of course, availability of the course during the semester you need it is also uh, a concern, but we try to round out because sometimes actually getting outside of the accounting department is not a bad thing. We need to have uh, enough accounting skills, but the more you know about business overall makes you a better overall prof uh, professional as well. So the integrated MAC. So as a UNI student, you can actually start your master's degree while you are finishing up your undergrad degree. In fact, many students get both at the same time. Some use those seven credits for the CPA review. There goes my lights. Um, for the CPA review to finish up their undergrad to get to that 120. So um, you can apply for admission. Uh, you can do it during your semester you're taking intermediate to or shortly after. And I'll help work on when you what semester you should put down as your starting semester. Uh, during your while you're finishing up your undergrad, you will then register for grad credit, possibly take some undergrad and grad in the same semester. Um, this is where I can help plan that out for you. Graduate credit does not count towards your undergraduate degree. So you can't kind of double count in the program because that won't get you to the 150 either that you need for the CPA. So it kind of looks like this. Your fourth, uh, you'll start completing your undergrad. You'll take three to nine credits uh, of your graduate degree in the summer, you can take up to 12. Think if you do REN and you do uh, an internship, you can get 12 credits during the summer. Uh, if you have another internship during the spring, we will work that out. 
In the fall fifth year, uh, you would take your four required classes. And in that spring, you'll take the CPA review classes and another MAC elective. So here's how you can get to your uh, 18 elective credits pretty quickly. And we could do some rearranging. If you want to take just the four required, we'll move a MAC elective somewhere else. There's a lot of room for flexibility. I probably have 50 students that I advise, and I bet you I have 48 different schedules to, uh, that, to keep track of. All right, so to apply, uh, first of all, the requirements to get into the MAC, um, you have to be successful through uh, your inter all of your the four first core classes, so intermediate one, two, cost, and AIS. In those four classes, you have to have a B minus or better average and an overall GPA of 3.0. Now, the GMAT is actually waived for all UNI students. So you can ignore kind of the the bottom part. This is assuming you have taken all of your upper level accounting classes here at UNI. And that is most everybody I've ever uh, talked to. So if you have that B minus in all of your accounting classes or better, uh, of course, better is always great. And an overall GPA of 3.0, you meet the minimum qualifications. So if you're kind of on the border, let, let's talk anyway and see if we can get a plan to uh, go ahead. So finances are always a concern. So just a note that tuition graduate, uh, graduate tuition is about $750 more a semester. And honestly, if you compare that to other universities, that is actually a smaller differential than most universities. Um, but on the good side, there actually are more financial aid opportunities. So for example, um, you're either classified as a, in, for financial aid as an undergrad or grad, and I will work with you on that schedule to kind of tell you when that switches. So if you're a graduate student, you can actually apply for accounting department scholarships two times, once as an undergrad and once as a graduate. There are also additional scholarships through the graduate school, one of which is working as a graduate assistant. For example, Andy is using his graduate assistant hours and doing some tutoring uh, 10 hours a week. Others are working directly with a faculty member to help them for anything from research, uh, gather information, uh, help with grading, proctor exams. So just kind of being an aid and you get to do some fun things with a lot of professors. Uh, and then there's additional scholarships with the grad college as well. They would be available the semester you're taking your core classes that fall. So just a little bit how we kind of organize. So. Um, I will be sending these slides to everybody who filled out that survey at the beginning. So here's just some example ways we can lay out your classes. So you can do an internship in the spring, summer, AI in business for six, maybe another class depending on. You can get your electives here. Um, even if you want, you can move this fall MAC elective to the prior fall. Uh, we have some options there. If you do a summer internship without REN, we can schedule your classes something like this. So here's your four cl core classes again, and the rest are your electives. We can move that to the prior summer. Uh, you can do REN. Uh, a summer internship, split those. Actually, a lot of our students did both of these in the same semester and move our back electives here in the prior fall. So just depends on what courses you want to take. You can do AI in business or two courses. We have two summer courses, MAC electives in the spring in there to get to your 18. So these are just kind of some very high level examples. Once again, I will be happy to work with you. If you're really early, for example, in financial or managerial, um, we'll put together a high level plan. It will get more detailed and more specific as you get closer to registration. 
I'd like to kind of end this before we open it up with quest to questions is um, with any some tips for success. So I will start with the ones that I have seen. Andy, if you have any to add to this list, I'll have you jump in at the end. As somebody who's living probably one of the more hectic semesters right now, I'd like to hear that. So I think the number one is time management. Uh, the students that have had the easiest time going through uh, the program, especially the semester with the four core prod classes, had excellent time of management. So they planned ahead. They knew what assignments were due. For example, in my class, I hand out assignment day one, and it's due the day before Thanksgiving. If you wait till the day, you know, a couple of days before, it's going to be a lot harder than if you start thinking about it throughout. So planning ahead on those things. I always like to say the due date is not the due date. Um, you know, that just goes with the project management. And overall, I think the work isn't hard. It's things that you can do. If you've made it through this program thus far, it's not any more difficult or challenging. It is a lot of hard work. I'm not going to lie about that. You still will have to put in a lot of effort and hard work, but it's all things that you can do if, if you've made it thus far. Andy, what other tips would you add to that? Yeah, I think maybe what I've gotten the most value out of the Mac program so far is learning when to turn it on and when to turn it off. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you go into the working world, you don't just have assignments and then you're done for the semester, right? You're going to finish a project and then you're going to have another project due. And then you're going to finish that one. There's going to be something else due. And I think the Mac does a really nice job of preparing you for what the real world is going to look like, right? You're going to finish something. Next week, you've got maybe even a bigger assignment coming on. And so as an accountant, right, you can't get too stressed out about what's on your plate. You've got to be really, really good at plate management, right? And so I think the Mac does a great job of that. I also think it does a nice job of getting you to stop the procrastination, right? When you go into the Mac program, procrastination got, has to hit the door, right? It turns into something where I need to know when to turn it on, but it's also really important to know when to turn it off, right? So when you have a weekend and you need to recharge, it's also really important to do that too. And so I'd say this is a great uh, jumping point between an undergrad and going straight to a, a public accounting career um, where you are going to be really busy and there are going to be those really long hours. And I think this is a really, really... Um, strong program for that. I also think what this program might do better than anything else is working with other people. So in your undergrad, you can kind of get away with, you know, being the person that does the whole project on your own, um, kind of shifts the work to you to make sure you get the good grade. In these classes, it is not really able, like mentally um, readily available for you to do everything on your own. You have to use other people's work. You have to delineate your projects. And so um, if there's anything I think this has done probably better than anything else that I've done in school thus far, it's being able to work with others. Because if you can't work well with others, a lot like in life, you're not going to be very successful. And if you can't work well, I don't think you're going to, with others, I don't think you're going to last anywhere for very long. And so I would say, um, you know, including the people factor into it with the projects. Um, also, right, when you're doing the projects in the MAC program, it isn't something that you can kind of regurgitate. It's something you've got to sit on, you've got to think about, you've got to come up with a really solid answer. And I think that's where the master's program gets its, you know, its, its strength is that it's not stuff you can just take in and regurgitate out. It's something you have to take in, sit on it and provide actual answers. And I think that's really, really strong um, for a career in public accounting. Thank you, Andy. So, what should you do now? You've attended this session. You have kind of learned a little bit more about the Mac. So first, decide if this might be the right career path for you. So, so if, you, if you're done with Intermediate 2, probably now's the time with to apply. Um, we can put together a schedule for you so you know what to register for. Keep in mind, registration for graduate students starts uh, October 30th. So you will want to have your application in if you want to register for any graduate classes in the spring. Currently in Intermediate 2, you can start applying. So let's have that conversation and determine what your starting semester is. We want to delay it. You can be kind of a temporary grad status. It will delay the full admission and that just to help out financial aid. So talk to me. We'll put together a schedule 
to make sure we get you in the right starting semester on your application. If you haven't taken Intermediate 2 yet, keep studying, keep plugging away, but you still could go ahead and meet with me if you would like to put together an early plan of study. Remember, you have a double major especially or more, um, planning ahead is very beneficial. It will keep us from having to put you into a lot more credits. We can spread out um, what you're taking. So if you're still unsure, feel free to meet with me or if you're ready to apply, let's make an appointment. Um, I will be sending out an email to everybody who attended the session and filled out the survey. Um, bring your undergraduate plan of study and there's a link here that you can use with the, the QR code, or that link will be in the email that you that I will send to you, and you can schedule an appointment, and we can meet, we can discuss it a little bit further, uh, put together your plan of study, and go from there, or get your application in, whatever is meant to be at the time. So appointments are opened up as early as tomorrow, uh, through the, through registration. So honestly, earlier is better because that way we can get everything situated and set up before registration starts. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is open it up for anybody's questions that you may have the, on the Mac. I know the four of us will stick around until everybody's off. If you want, you can unmute and ask your question, or you can put it in the chat, whichever is easiest. And if you don't have any questions, or uh, you are free to have a great evening, and I hope to see you soon. If you have questions, we're sticking around, though. For the um, internship credit one, do we mm -hmm. have to do uh, like assignments inside of it? You will have to do an ending paper. Okay. Thank you. No problem, Louise. At the graduate level, is it the six credits max for internship credit? Yes, you can get six credits for the master's degree, three for an undergrad. And actually, you can have two separate internships, get three for undergrad, a different internship, and get six for grad. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Has to be two separate internships, though. I do want to be clear about that. You can't double dip. And then uh, for the integrated program, mm -hmm. um, if, like, I'm a UNI at DMAC, a uh, student. So if I'm planning that, would it be more so those summer classes that are online? The summer uh, classes are online. Those core classes in the fall are currently not. Okay. Um, I know we've been having discussion about what options there are. So um, I have a question online. Can it be any type? Yes, it has to be a county related. It does not have to be audit or tax. You can be in industry um, as long as you're doing something more than making copies and other, you know, it has to be you have some type of accounting work. You have to know a debit from a credit at least. Amy, to follow up on Emily's question, I it also, since you're going to have a lot of electives within the MAC, um, you could conceivably, it could be, you know, any of your electives, if you wanted to take a couple of things that were in an online format, that would count too, that would uh, could potentially work too. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, actually. Thank you. Yeah, so it'd still be those four credit or those four core classes, though, that we would have to yeah. discuss. Yeah, I mean, but it could be a, 
Oh, maybe there's a, a couple of online MBA classes that you, that you might get in that you just decided would be a good fit within your program or something like that too. That, right, for electives. There, yeah, there, there's quite a few options on the elective side. Mm -hmm. Most of the program is actually electives, so that you know, other than the twelve hours. Yeah. Right. And with the spacing of it, one could space out to where you do the electives first, and then uh, end up hitting those fall classes right very possible right however i don't know with how the cpa exam works so right so i mean our internships in this are uh, i'm sorry our review programs in the spring but i mean of course you know there are a lot of options for cpa review uh, obviously we feel ours is you know highly rated and our students do well but there are, you know, options because I, you know, when location is a problem, you know, location is more challenging. <laughs> Anything else I can answer for anyone? And Joe and I, can, Emily, we can work with you on scheduling and whatever, else, you know, if you're interested. So, um the question in the chat about managerial accounting we don't have a grad necessarily have a, a grad managerial accounting other other than uh we've occasionally offered i'll say a um an independent managerial course in the summer um on occasion um there is a managerial accounting in the mba but that oh. is not recommended at all yeah. that would be a repeat pretty much of what you've taken as a, that's for non-accounting majors yeah, that's actually uh, like principles of managerial. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't see that one. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.